I, you know, I, I know, I know there are, of course, and and it is one, there's something to worry about, worry about in any in any situation like this. I know there are organizations on the ground. UNHCR is one of them, and I've worked with them for 10 years, and I've physically walked around and seen the bamboo, the tents, the structures, the jerry cans, the items, all of the people that are receiving assistance. Um, they have to be very accountable, and they will continue to be. So I think for people that are concerned about where their money's going. Um, you know, find the credible organizations and, and make sure they're accountable. And there are a lot of those on the ground. So I, I, don't, um, I, I don't want that to be an excuse for anybody not to give assistance. Do you think the government response here was too slow? We've heard this from many, many people ourselves over the last five weeks. Government was nowhere to be seen. Well, from what I understand, the military, though, was very, was very active. And that is, that is separate from the government. But I think they're to be commended for what they've done. And, and yeah, of course, the government can do more. Of course, they... they uh, um, and our governments can do more. We're already seeing children dying from preventable diseases. We've seen children with cholera. We've seen children with diarrhea. What would you say to the international community now? What everybody's saying, for everybody to do everything that they can. You know, there are 18 million people who've, who've been affected. There are, there are millions who, who, are, who are in desperate need of immediate aid um, so, so they don't lose their lives. It's, um, it is... It is the numbers are, are, are on a scale beyond what we can imagine. I think that may be part of where the funding is becoming an issue. Strangely, the numbers are so high, people feel overwhelmed and they don't feel that they can do anything to help. But everything helps, and every little bit helps someone and saves someone and puts a tent up for someone. So, so we, we, we are here to, to urge everybody to please keep these people in mind and do what they can. You are a mother, and I know you spent a lot of time with mothers here listening to their stories. What has been the impact of that, listening to what has happened to them? I think that's, for me as a mother, it's the hardest thing about visiting these areas because as a parent, I think the hardest thing is when your child is hungry, your child needs medicine or shelter, and you can't give it to them. And you feel, you, know, you, 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 you see your child starving, you see your child sick, and, and you can do nothing to help them except beg people um, to help you. And we've met a lot of mothers like that. We've met a lot of mothers who lost their children in the flood because it was so quick and so fast and the children, they weren't able to grab all their children and some of the babies were sleeping. And, um, so it's an unimaginable disaster for these people. The, the trauma will, will, you know, will, will not be healed anytime soon for, for their loss. And, and, um, and there's much we can't do. There's much, we, can't, we can't bring the children back, but we can certainly help them now.